Welcome to Uncaged. Today we're speaking with Yuval Galan. Yuval has an amazing background as a global entrepreneur, and we'll be talking to him a lot about kind of his entrepreneurial activities. Most pertinent, though, is his new venture, where he is the co-founder and CEO of Waltz. <laughs> And so excited to hear more about what Waltz is up to and where that where they're headed in the very, very near future. But before we get to the Waltz story, Yuval, let's start with your story. Tell us a little bit about you and your career. Sounds good. Thanks for that. Um, so I was born in Israel. Um, my parents, when I was very young and complained about my allowance were insufficient. Uh, because I wanted to do other stuff. They told me to get a job. So mm -hmm. when I was six, I took it seriously and started looking for a job. Um, that was going to the commercial center next to my house, speaking to flower shops, you know, uh, vegetable stores, meat stores, and just like starting doing deliveries. They were all cracking up. And I was like, yeah, I want to earn some, I want to earn a, a living. Uh, my parents didn't think I would take it seriously. So finally went, then took some other jobs, beta tester, Later on, worked in a bunch of other places and at 18, started my mandatory service in the Israeli Defense Forces. Initially uh, joined the intelligence unit, but then the 8200 unit then moved to the strategy planning department of the Air Force. Mm -hmm. um, did my mandatory service there. In 06, I got a job offer to move to Italy to become assistant defense attaché, where I was responsible for military intelligence and MOD cooperations, MOD, mm -hmm. Ministry of Defense. Um, did a similar role in the Netherlands, stayed for school in both, had lots of fun uh, as a young kid uh, traveling around the world and having a full-time job while studying. What an amazing background. And so, I mean, certainly as a budding entrepreneur and you then worked and lived around the world and had an uh, incredible set of opportunities, now everything comes together in this latest business. So tell me a little bit about Waltz. So basically, the story continued when I started moving around. Since then, I lived also in Finland and mm -hmm. uh, east of China, Brazil, Thailand, um, Argentina. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I left China at the end of 19, uh, when COVID started, I was realizing that because China was closing down, so it meant no logistics, no construction materials, and uh, no labor workers. So I said, okay, there's going to be a um, real, estate issue, real estate crisis. So I said, I have to buy real estate pretty fast. Because if not, it would be too expensive. So I was looking for geographies, Greece, uh, Brazil, Israel, and the US. And I tried to buy real estate. I failed in my home country of Israel because my income was not generated there. I failed in Brazil because I wasn't a tax resident. In the US, I looked at New York. Lights were on at all the skyscrapers. People were escaping the cities. And I arranged a group of friends. We went to buy, and it took us eight months to close. It was mm. ridiculous. My visa expired on the way. Banks were not leaning to... Uh, processes. I had to fly to Thailand to get a two weeks quarantine. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Most global city in the world. And I can't buy real estate and where everyone wants to buy. Um, so I said, okay, let's start investigating this. And I started speaking to about hundreds of people from the ecosystem. And I realized the issue is not funding. It's not banking. It's local institutions understand the assets. They don't understand the borrower. In your mm -hmm. home country, you understand the borrower. You don't understand the assets. So that's their home country banks will not lend. I said, okay, right. let's build an end-to-end -end solution that allows foreigners to invest in U.S. real estate with a checkout experience, just like when we grew up, we went to the bookstore, book was unavailable, host was sending it, would receive it or not. And then we said, we want to build passive income. Why is it so difficult to buy an asset that everyone wants to buy, which is a $50 trillion value? So we built right. walls. That's exciting. And uh, I know that you are, you're based in Miami right now, which is certainly one of the real estate centers and certainly a city that has a ton of international real estate investors, uh, which, you know, face this challenge every day. It seems like uh, so something that people are are, are really going to value, really, really going to need. But tell me a little bit about kind of the process of, of building this company. What have been some of the, the hurdles that you faced along the way? So as you remember, because yourself, you also lived in quite a few countries. Yeah. Um, when we moved to a country, we're being treated like we're Tarzans coming from the jungle. No matter if it's the same <laughs> bank, if you have a corporate letter that says you are who you say you are, mm -hmm. uh, no one cares. It's like, oh, who are you? Oh, you work for 
Google in a different language, mm, you must be a drug dealer. Uh, you have liquidity on your account. That's very scary. It's the same bank. Um, and then I was like, okay, we have to research because at the end, banks are pro-profit organizations. We need to find common grounds with them and other uh, stakeholders. And we realized the problem was compliance and cross-border compliance mm. and know your customer, KYC, BSA, uh, anti-money laundering. So we researched and we spoke to a lot of institutions, a lot of experts. And mm -hmm. the hardest part was to overcome the compliance barrier because you as a client suffer the most. But if I'm able to suffer or ease the suffering for you, then you're like, oh, that's easy for me. I want to buy more and more and more. So yeah. the whole idea was to solve the compliance and KYC. Then the technology came along and this is how it started. That's great. I think that it also will be useful the other way around. I uh, spent a lot of time investing in property in Europe. And sometimes, you know, the U.S. banking system is so separated from you know, the rest of the world that in some, in some forms and fashion, you know, that it's, uh, it, it becomes a, a difficult the other way. So I think you're going to, you're going to be waltzing in many directions, you've all, uh, which is very, very exciting. Well, listen, I mean, we're at an interesting point now. I and mean, we've gone through this phase where, as you know, like interest rates have been nuts. Everyone that wanted to buy anything has paused and, now everyone in the U.S. is excited because maybe the interest rates will be being a little bit no more normalized. But what are you seeing? I mean, when, when you think about these investments that you're going to be helping uh, support, what are you seeing in terms of the, the marketplace? Is this is this the moment? Are we going to are we going to start to see some more fluidity? Should I get ready to sell my apartment? These are all very, very valid points. So let's start with um, the major the major part of it, which is interest rate. So interest rate rate, um, as you know, it's basically um, a fictional psychological number. Mm. Basically, what's important, it's the effective interest rate. Effective interest rate, you take into account the, the <clears throat> inflation. And then, yes, we were used to free interest rate, 2%, 3%. But what happened is once the Fed started raising the interest rate, it meant that us consumers, when we take a loan, it will cost us 6 to 7%. Now, what happened to the developer? His rates became 12 to 14. So two options would happen there. Either would not build, which means lack of inventory, mm -hmm. or he would build and inventory will cost much more. So people will not buy. Now, at the same time, we had crazy inflation, which forced people to move to, you know, satellite cities. And what right. happened again? No inventory, which means rents are increasing. So that means we created a problem for the next 20 to 30 years. And people that are able to buy now should buy now. The reason is once rates drop, prices go up again and you can refinance, get money out, right. and then you can buy more property. So at the end, that is a problem that we're not going to solve. Now, pausing the market, again, real estate is a $50 trillion market. And even at the pause period of high interest rate instability, there were $2.3 trillion value of property that changed hands. So it means right. that real estate if there's 100 billion less, 200 billion more, it doesn't move the needle. Mm -hmm. Then the macro environment, um, it's pretty interesting because the US is the most stable market in the world. So for any country you have that you read about any macro issue or any leadership that changes that caused instability, people move their money to hard assets. What are hard mm -hmm. assets? Real estate and gold. And you know, governments in South America change. Israel had a legal system issue. Money moves to real estate. So sell, not sell. Keep it. Yeah. It's a long-term investment. Just refinance. Yeah, it's a really great point. I think, especially when I think about some of my conversations with investors and, and maybe less sophisticated investors, they've always been like very comfortable to invest in the brick, in brick. <laughs> and I, I think it's something that probably is almost human nature to invest in the brick. It will be a marketplace. And I, that statistic that you put out there where you talked about how even in a tough moment, right, how many transactions there were, that's an amazing stat. 
Um, it's a, I think it's a really important one for folks to to remember and keep in mind because it's only going to be getting hotter and getting busier once again. And there's a real desire, I think, foreign investors to invest in the U.S. market, sometimes to my chagrin living in Miami because I would like some of the prices to drop. But uh, I find that there's a there, the, the, the prices continue to to be bolstered by by foreign foreign investment. But I mean, you've all it's a it's a really interesting space that you work in. You've certainly played a role as an entrepreneur throughout your career. Tell me a little bit about why is it this space that uh, gets you up in the morning that that it get it gets you excited? Because it's different. So so one of the things that um, think about it this way, people like us that moved around the world in the age of globalization, it's very popular. Mm-hmm. And we are the ones that take chances. We move to another country, we start from zero. And then at the end, um, the system is not adapted to us. And before we were, you know, migrants that were maybe 100,000 of us, but now we're millions of people. We're millions of people that I want wanting change and to mm-hmm. do things differently. And we want to invest and move the needle. Um, and the barrier of entry is very, very big. And many people told me I can't. I love those challenges. Means you can't, it's difficult, means there's a lot of people that are going to try and not necessarily succeed. And it means that I will be very busy, especially as an ADHD guy that gets bored pretty quickly. Real estate is a never ending problem. And no matter what you play with, it's like, oh, here's another trillion. Here's another problem you got to solve. Here's another inefficiency. And my whole uh, point was to create a value chain for every single person in the ecosystem and not people try and many startups try to cut the middleman. I do not cut anyone. I empower every single stakeholder in the ecosystem so everyone can work more efficiently. And so the clients like you and I and others may have an easy experience for the largest asset class in the world that they will buy and they should get good customer service for. Absolutely. I mean, it's such a critical purchase for the end consumer. But even, I mean, I'm imagining that also your product will be extremely valuable for the larger investors, right? These big developers that want to be putting substantial sums of capital to work in the marketplace. But here we are, you all, you're you're getting going. It's 2024. Um, what's on the docket for you and the team? So just like you said, uh, we figured out that there's also a lot of Americans especially Gen Z tech entrepreneurs that are like, I'm allergic to bureaucracy. I've invested in stocks. I invested in crypto, I invested in startups, but I always wanted hard assets without the hassle. So focusing on that um, population is very important to us. 2024 is going to be an exciting year because Fed kind of seems they're going to drop the rates. So at least that's market expectation. So market hopefully will stabilize. Demand is back. Construction will be back. Um, globalization, hopefully. Um, and then the idea is to um, better our product, scale up and get more clients happy so they can buy again and again and again. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, probably for for listeners, this will be too local of a discussion. But I think one of the things that I've seen is a challenge in the Miami marketplace is that, you know, we see, I think there's 20, 30 major luxury buildings that are coming into the market this year alone. But they're really all targeting that kind of like ultra luxury market. You know, they're all going after that top, top segment. I'm actually hoping that we get more investment in real estate because those next tiers down where I think we're pricing out a lot of young people, to be honest with you. I think systems like Waltz open up the market even more. So not just for those ultra wealthy, uh, but really for everybody. Exactly. Um, and we focus mainly now in a high interest rate environment on the single family homes mm-hmm. and the mid tier, just like you said, <clears throat> because of those environments, the rents don't really pay the interest rate. Um, and the whole idea of why we love America and why the government is also supporting these kind of programs is because many of people in America, just like other countries these days with cost of living, will not be able to afford a home in the next few years. So if you don't support investors, people won't have homes and won't have places to live and when interests go down, other financial products will pay less. So if you incentivize investors to keep on investing in real estate, it means more decent people, service industries, support industries will have homes and will be able to save for the day they will buy a home. So this is a self-serving 
uh, sector as well. So Yuval, here we are, 2024, all of this stuff is happening. Congratulations on getting to this point. Now it's the easy part, right? You, oh. you're, you're launched, it'll all just work out for itself. But let's try to help you out a little bit here and say, if there's folks out there that want to learn more about Waltz, where should they find you? So I'll tell a joke, a very sarcastic one, and then I'll say where they should go. <laughs> so I used to say, uh, my people left Egypt uh, after they built the pyramids. <laughs> <laughs> if someone tells you being an entrepreneur is easy, I tell them easily, I would rather go back build pyramids in Egypt. Uh, <laughs> startup is tough. It's fun. We love it. However, mm -hmm. um, that's one thing. The second thing, uh, we built one sort of source of truth. It's called getwaltz.com. Go there, learn about real estate. The idea is a Disney, Disney related content. We built videos, we built blogs. So just check it out. Learn more about real estate. Understand what it is understand why I love it and others too, why it works. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a great business. You've all, thank you so much for coming on the show today to tell us about what you're launching. Congratulations. And I'm excited to see this come to, to further fruition. And for all of you out there, go check it out, getwaltz.com. We'll tell you everything you need to know about real estate and hopefully get you down the path to uh, make make some investments. Um, you've all... Uh, thank you so much for being on Uncaged, and we look forward to having you back. Thank you. Thanks, man.